How's it going? I'm Ida Golden and welcome to my vlog. Alright, okay, I'm going to start this one by drawing attention to something that I haven't been drawing attention to, um, and that is the fact that I'm currently wearing a binder. Uh, this is not the first vlog that I've worn a binder with. I've not worn them on, I've not worn one on every single vlog that I've done since getting one, um, but I have worn them on a number of vlogs. The reason I'm drawing attention to it today um, is because obviously I'm out as non binary, I am in the process of socially transitioning um, to living as non binary. So I know a lot of you are aware <laughs> of the fact that, you know, sometimes that can come with certain other things, um, but I don't want people assuming that I'm, you know, planning to have top surgery necessarily, because at this point during my transition, I don't know if it's true. I don't know if I'm going to want top surgery to give me a male chest or just reduction surgery to give myself smaller breasts um, because surprise surprise there are actually a lot of reasons why somebody who is non-binary or transmasculine might have issues with their, their body or their chest um, that aren't necessarily dysphoric um, so there are a lot of reasons other than dysphoria, uh, just as there are for cis females, um, that you can have issues with, with your chest and issues with how it looks. And, you know, it can be a tough minefield to sort of pick your way through and to figure out exactly what it is that you uh, want in a need in order to feel comfortable within your own, within your own skin and within your own body. Um, so for this vlog I'm going to get a little bit personal with you guys and I'm going to explain as best I can um, what my feelings are and what my, my experience has been uh, that has kind of led me to this point where I feel like wearing a binder on occasion is helpful um, so that you can kind of understand a little bit where my headspace is at and why at this stage I cannot say with definite certainty what my transitional goals um, are going to be long term, whether it's I'm just going to do the social transition or whether at some point I might consider some medical transitioning. Um, at this stage it's far too early in my journey to make any definite statements about anything because there are a lot of things for me to consider and there are a lot of things for me to figure out in order for me to, to, to know within myself what it is I, I actually need. Um, so today, um, as I said, I'm going to get a little bit personal with you guys and I'm going to explain um, primarily a lot of the issues I have around my breasts and why, as I said, wearing a binder on occasion is something that I am I have found and I'm finding very helpful um, in helping me determine where I want, you know, my, my transitional goals and, and my transition and how I want it to sort of to shape and, and to go and to look. Um, okay, so we'll start this at the very beginning. Um, I was an early bloomer, uh, by which I mean I was in my first training bra before I started secondary school. Um, I think it's like literally just the summer before but I was already sort of a C-ish cup by that point, so I was already fairly well developed. Um, I'd been wearing um, um, I'd been wearing crop tops for about a year before that point, um, and I know this, can sound, this, is, this is kind of beside the point, but I was also a late starter, um, and I know this distinctly because my mum was rather concerned about the fact that I my, my breasts had started growing in almost two years before I got my first period, which is an unusually long length of time uh, between those two events. Usually it's closer to a year. 
Um, but for me, I was an early bloomer and a late starter. Um, just just happens to be the way that it that it kind of went. But I was definitely in a C cup, um, moving towards a D cup by the time I started secondary school. So, um, but I grew. <laughs> I was quite prominent, like even very early on. Um, I was definitely, you know, I definitely had breasts um, from, you know. The hitting puberty, I definitely had breasts. Um, by the time I left secondary school, so by the time I finished my A levels and was looking to go on to university, I was already at the point where it was difficult to find bras in my size. Uh, wasn't it impossible, but it was extremely difficult because I had a narrow band and a large cup. So, literally, by the time I'd finished um, secondary school, by the time I started university, I was already, I already had a very definite reason to be frustrated with the size of my breasts, um, which was that it was not, I, I, like, I would go into um, Primark and Peacock's, which were affordable stores for somebody who isn't making their own money because they are still a student um, and not a not working student at that. I lived on my student loan. I didn't have a job. I was very conservative with my money. Um, but it was very difficult for me to find bras in my size for an, an affordable amount. Uh, most of the, like, and I was very limited as to what ones I could get because, um, as I said, a narrow band, large cup, was not a good combination. Um, and this frustration only got worse as I hit my 20s, and especially after I put on the weight. So some of you uh, might be aware that before I started doing these vlogs, about a year before I started doing these vlogs, vlogs um, I actually lost a lot of weight. Um, at my heaviest, I was 14 stone. At my lightest, I was nine stone. I'm now sort of around the 10 stone mark um, currently, which is a much more comfortable weight for me to be at. I'm going to be able to maintain that very easily. So this is probably around the weight I'm sort of gonna sort of stay long term. Um, but at my heaviest, I was 14 stone. And I was a 34k, um, which, yeah, try going into a store and finding that. And I was a 34k at the best guess because they didn't stock that size. I had to have it ordered in and hope that it fit. And because it, because it was such an annoying process anyway, I'd order it in and I would wear it even if it wasn't necessarily the right size for me because it was still closer than anything else I was going to get. And it, you know, it took at least, I don't know, at least three to five days for it to come in. So it was a very, very frustrating process. Um, and that's on top of the fact that it would usually take at least an hour for them to best guess the size that I needed and it, it basically like this process has been getting worse and even after I lost the weight it was still taking me a long time uh, for them to work out the size that I needed because narrow big and on top of that not only narrow but for some reason would always collapse inwards when a bra went on <laughs> that sounds like a really weird thing to say um so when I was in the 34K, for example, I was actually measuring 36 around the band, but as soon as they put 36 on me, it would do the obvious sign that the back was too big. Um, for whatever reason, I always end up in a size down from what I measure. Um, I'm currently 29 inches around, which would be rounded up to a 30 band. Um, but my guess is if I went to get fitted, I would probably end up in 28. And bearing in mind that, I mean, I'm not, I, I currently wear bralettes uh, because I can't be bothered. A, I can't be bothered with the hassle of getting myself fitted because I, I have better things to do with the hour of my life, especially during a COVID situation. <laughs> and B, because the, it's the only way I can guarantee not having to deal with underwires and underwires are extremely 
extremely painful um, or have been extremely painful for me in the past because of the issues that I get with my ribs. Um, so avoiding underwires and avoiding a lengthy process for them to work out at best guess what size I am um, is, is more than enough um, for me to like, not want to get myself properly measured. Um, even though there are a few good reasons for me to get properly measured that I will get into in a minute. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's a, you know, at best guess, based on, you know, how you can calculate it, I am probably a 30E if my band is 30, but I would be a 28F if the history holds true and I need to go down a band size. And this is just best guess, just based on that. And these aren't sizes that are common sizes. So, yeah, um, I just from that, just from like knowing that small piece of information, just makes me so reluctant to want to go and get measured ever again because I know this process. I know how difficult they find it to size me correctly because for whatever reason, my breasts do not do what they think they are going to do and I end up in like ridiculous size bras that you have to order in because there is no way they just stock them normally because reasons. Um, so this is a huge, huge part of the reason why I have a lot of negative feelings about my breasts. It's a huge source of frustration for me. It's a huge source of I really wish I don't have to be bothered with that. In fact, I'm going to not be bothered with that and not necessarily do the thing that you know most supportive and best of my breasts. Although, to be fair, the bralettes that I wear, which are the same squeeze uh, crop top style ones, are actually surprisingly like they, I think they refer to them as like sports bralettes, but they're not really sports bralettes. But they are surprisingly supportive, um, and I would recommend them to anybody who is in a similar situation and getting equally frustrated. Um, they, they, for me at least, they fit well, they're comfortable. I mean, I work on my feet in an environment where I am moving around quite a lot and, you know, I, I know my shirt is kind of loose so it's probably if they are moving around more than I think they are then but they don't feel like they're moving around or are any less supportive than they have ever been when I've been wearing bras. So I would definitely highly recommend them. I, I definitely think for me uh, and for my awkwardness, um, they are a better alternative than spending an hour trying to find a single bra that fits. Because that, for me, is is the experience that I have had for so long and I just, I hate it. Um, it is a huge, huge reason why I get so frustrated at the size of my breasts. Um, but it's not the only reason that I have frustration and I've had feelings of frustration towards my breasts um, over the years and um, so I, uh, I don't like the shape of them um, at all. I'm not, I'm not going to go into any details but anybody who has larger breasts know that they don't have like, like nice little perky sort of shape. They, they do hang down a little bit and certainly after I lost all the weight, yeah, for me, I, I just don't, I don't like the way they look. I don't like the, the shape of them and I, uh, I found because of the combination that I have in particular um, I've tried trans tape for taking my breasts up rather than using a binder because obviously as I've mentioned I do have problems with my ribs so initially I was very reluctant to try a binder because I was very worried that I would actually find it too painful and, and it, they are expensive to get a, deep, a good decent one they are expensive and it is something that we do want to spend the money on so I wasn't going to like cheap out something that would almost definitely cause me a lot of pain I did want to you know give myself the best shot with it and I was very reluctant to sort of do it to begin with because I'm so worried about you know putting the, the excess pressure on on my ribs I've actually been fortunate enough, fortunate enough to find that actually no it's not been that bad um, and in fact it might actually be helping my ribs a little bit but I'm not sure at this stage, I'm sort of still trying to figure that out. Um, but I, I have to admit, I think maybe they have actually given my ribs some, some good, but maybe I'm just wishfully thinking that because I want to the excuse to wear my binder a little bit more. Although I am being very, very cautious and sensible with my binder wearing at the moment because of my, my rib issues. So uh, anyway, that's sort of, sort of slightly beside the point. But, um, 
So I, I did sort of try translate as an option. Um, I, I went for the, the biggest size um, because I, you know, yeah, I, I figured that's probably what I would need. Um, I, but because of like the shaping of my breast and the size of my breast as that kind of combination, I found it so fiddly to do, even like following their tutorials, I just found it so frustratingly difficult to do that it just wasn't like, I, I, I don't even think I managed to do it successfully once and it was, it's far too expensive a method to, to do if you can't do it like easily and yeah, I, I mean, if at some point you know, I, I, it, it felt like a two-person job. Like, I felt like I needed a second person there in order to help me with it because just, yeah, the, the combination of size and shaping that I have for my breasts. And I already hate the, sh the shaping and the size of my breasts. It just made it even more prominent and made it even worse. Um, so, yeah, on top of, yeah, so th there's that. So it's, it's a case of, I, I hate the size of them because it makes bra shopping really difficult. I hate the size and the shape of them because I personally don't think they look good. Um, I don't like looking at them. I, I don't think I look naked. A uh, good look. Hmm. I don't think I look good naked because of the shape of them, because of the size of them. They they feel horrible. Like to me, they feel horrible, horrible to look at. I don't. You know, I, I have a lot of issues with with how they look, and, and I know they're normal. I, I, you know, I, I've seen enough images and enough whatever to assure me that actually, no, they, they are normal. Yeah, they're not perfect, but, you know, nobody's breasts are perfect unless they've been augmented. Um, and even then, they're probably not perfect, let's be fair. Um, so I know they aren't unnatural. They are, you know, perfectly fine. I just, I just hate them. I, really just do not like the way they look at all. They, 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 like, I'm always, like, if anybody does see me naked for any, for whatever reason, um, when, when I've been in a relationship, I'm always very apologetic about them. Um, in fact, with my, my ex-partner, I would, if I could, like, keep a top on when we were doing anything, just because I just, I just hated them. I really didn't like them. I still really don't like them. Um, but again, that could just be body issue, uh, image issues and combined with like the frustration at how big they are in, you know, the, the, the idea that, you know, I know what the idealized is supposed to look like and I know that I don't have that. Um, so a lot of these, these issues and these feelings that I have towards and around my breasts aren't necessarily dysphoric issues as, as I'm trying to sort of underline and, and make clear, um, I hope. Um, it could just be body image issues, it could be issues of body dysmorphia, which I'm more open to the idea that, you know, maybe I'm dysmorphic about how my breasts look, and that, you know, because in my head they are not right for me, or they, they I have all these issues with them and it's all really messy and really complicated, that you know, I'm frustrated and and um, disgusted by the way they. I'm not necessarily disgusted, but I hate the way they look um, because of dysmorphic reasons, or just because of general body issue reasons. That that is perfectly you know reasonable for me to to assume, and um, certainly when I was attempting to live as this female. That's all I allowed it to kind of be, and I ignored the other things I knew were in the background um, because it was much easier to go, no, my issue is just that I'm frustrated with the size, my issue is that I'm dysmorphic about them because they're not the idealised, and I, I feel like they're ugly and disgusting because of that, and all of these issues are just, you know, issues that a lot of individuals with breasts face reasons that aren't necessarily historic um, and you know I was you know perfectly fine and I'm still in the mindset that you know that, that could just be all it is um, however there have always been other feelings sort of there um, 
mostly around the idea that having them to begin with is getting in the way of me looking the way that I want to look and dressing the way that I want to dress and passing as masculine and I don't know if that is the best phrase to sort of use for it. Um, I guess it's more a case of wanting people to not just assume that I'm female because I have breasts, because I'm non-binary. Um, I don't want people to sort of look at me and assume my gender based on these things that I can't control. Um, and I have always felt like they get in the way of me being seen as anything other than female. And I have felt that frustration since a teenager and I spent a long time just allowing myself just to sort of, when I was sort of attempting to just be cis and ignore um, all of these other feelings that I was having and, and stuff like that, uh, I, I guess it made me even more frustrated towards my, towards my breasts. And, and a lot of like the, my, um, not necessarily reluctance, but not the reason why I was very slow in kind of going, you, you know what, actually I'm just standing in my own way was my breast. I was like, nobody's ever going to see me as anything other than cis female because my breasts are just so big and so annoying. And I really wish that they weren't. I really wish I could do something to make it so that, you know, that's not the first thing that people see about me. Um, you know, it, 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 yeah, I, it, there has been this genuine frustration there throughout, you know, just riding on in the background of, my breasts are huge and therefore dictate that I must be female and no, I'm non-binary. And I've known that and I've known I've not been cis, you know, for a long time. I just not, I've just struggled to fully actualize it within myself because of this barrier that I, I gave myself because of all the frustration and all the dislike I had towards my breasts. And therein lies where things start to become more complicated. Um, because I don't know 100% what the right thing to do is. Because I can be non-binary non and have big breasts. I'm sorry, but I can. My breasts do not dictate my gender. I know this. I do know this. And I, you know, there are a lot of non-binary people out there who are perfectly happy having whatever size breasts that they have, and they don't worry about it. But for me, I do. And it is something that gives me a lot of frustration and it is something that is constantly on my mind as this mental barrier um, for me being completely happy with the way that I look but I don't know what the right solution is I don't know whether it's just the case of oh maybe I would be happier if they were just smaller or if it's a case of you no know, actually I would be happier if I had a more masculine chest full stop and that is it is where the whole finder situation came into it. So um, I started looking into binders kind of before I really started to acknowledge that I needed to start my non-binary transition. Um, I just kept catching my attention whilst I was researching stuff and I just kept thinking oh maybe that's something I could try um it took me it took me at least six months before I actually was like no okay I'm going to actually do this properly get measure myself up um and order my first binder I was between the medium and the large size um like literally I think I was like a few millimetres into the medium, but it was so close to the borderline with the large that I went, you know what, for the sake of my ribs, I'm going to go for the large one. 
Um, I mean, in the end, I ended up doing two. I've got a full tank and a half tank. Half tank is the one that I've got on now. Um, they, I, again, they're, they're not the cheapest things. Um, and it, yeah, I slightly know who you find this. Um, I don't know how much of a difference it really makes because, again, and again, this is one of the reasons why I think there may be a sense of dysmorphia with my feelings um, because I still feel like, I mean, I know I'm not completely flat with it. I'm never going to be completely flat with it because of the size of my breast to begin with. Um, and, that, you know, I'm, I'm fine. I understand that situation. But in my head, I still feel like like if I'm not looking at them, they're suddenly going to start looking like breasts again, and they're suddenly going to look huge again, and I, I still feel like, you know, they're, they're still huge, even though I know, actually, no, I do look reasonably flat, and I, I you know, I'm giving myself a lot of evidence to know that they do look reasonably flat, and there are some days where I'm wearing the binder, and it is, like, I, don't know, I, I can see it, I, I feel like I have a more masculine chest, it feels really good, it feels really nice, and I don't feel like I've got like these massive watermelons underneath my, my top. Um, but there are other times where I'm just like, no, they, they still must look like really big breasts because how can they not look like anything else? Um, and I don't know if that is a sign that maybe I'm more towards the dysphoria uh, side of things, but I personally think it's more of a, a dysmorphic um, self-image because my mental image of myself is so convinced that my breasts are huge, um, huge and ugly, that I find it very difficult um, to see them in any other way, to the point where, because they can be quite difficult to place in a way where they don't look like they place, especially since I've lost, I've lost a little bit of weight. So I'm, I've actually ordered myself in a medium binder just to see if that makes a difference because I'm now actually within the, the medium range, like comfortably within the medium range. I'm not knowing it, like I'm, I'm like enough inside the medium range to say that yes, I would definitely not be going too tight with a medium because I'm not at that border anymore. Um, so I've ordered myself a medium because I am now actually in the medium range um, just to see if if it's maybe a case of because they are looser, things aren't sitting as well as they could be, and just to see if having maybe makes a difference. Um, but they, they, they can be quite difficult because of the size and shape of my breasts to position them in a way that A, they look even, <laughs> and B, they don't get this weird shaping at the side, um, which is part of the reason why I haven't done one of the things that I really kind of want to do with it at the moment, which is to bind whilst wearing a dress, because my dress is a little bit tighter. Um, because whenever I, I do, I, I end up like, like this weird shaping and, and it kind of makes it feel like it's very obvious that I'm wearing a binder and I don't want it to be really obvious that I'm wearing a binder. I just want to be able to wear these, these dresses that I still have because I do enjoy wearing dresses and to see what it would look like to have a less prominent chest in them. Um, I mean, okay, yeah, they're going to look slightly weird because it's more of a masculine chest. Um, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because I'm non-binary and clothes should be viewed as, you know, non-gender conforming anyway. And I'm fully into the idea of gender bending with my clothing or just, just not viewing clothing as being gendered. Um, I will sometimes jo joke with the cute friend um, that I'm wearing a dress today, <laughs> um, even though like I'm, I'm not binding or anything like that, just because, you know, I, I fully support the idea that, that clothing shouldn't be gendered and I fully don't feel like clothing should be gendered, um, but I also want the option of, you know, binding in a dress just to give me like a different kind of shape and to give me like a different kind of feel, but at the moment, because of, uh, I just don't feel like it looks right. Um, I'm hoping getting the mediums will help with that a little bit. Um, I, again, I don't know if this is just coming from my dys, dysmorphic viewpoint um, that I'm struggling to sort of 
except that actually no, it, it looks fine. It's just because I'm so focused on nitpicking and finding fault and finding problems with them that I can't actually look at it and go, actually no, that looks fine. That looks great. What what what's your problem? Um, but then again, I, 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 it could be actually no, it doesn't look quite right, and actually I am doing the right thing by trying a smaller uh, binder just to see if that smooths off the shape enough for me to be happier doing certain things. Um, then the other option that I'm looking into, which is why I probably need to get myself measured even though I know it's going to be a total headache, is minimising bras and sports bras. Um, and an actual sports bra, not the bralette style sports bra, bra, bra that I currently have, um, or the sports bras that I currently have, because they don't really reduce my size at all. <laughs> like bralettes. Don't do anything to reduce your size at all. Trust me, that you know you stay pretty much like whatever size that you are um, with a bralette. Um, they they don't really like you because you can't adjust them. You can't really pull them in. Yeah, they they whatever size you are, you're pretty much going to look pretty much the same size if you're using a bralette. Um, but I know that an actual sports bra and a minimising bra can give you a smaller um, breast profile. And I want the comparison. I think it's very important for me to get the comparison between having a more masculine shaped flatter look and a more feminine shaped flatter look or smaller look. Because that's probably going to tell me whether the feelings that I'm having are more dysmorphic or more dysphoric um, and which path is the right path for me going forward or whether actually no, just having access to binders and, and minimising bras slash sports bras is actually enough for me to have those, you know, it's, it's just enough for me to have those options there um, in order for me to feel sort of better about how I'm looking and, better about, and, and feel better about how I'm looking um, and give me the option of exploring um, my gender expression a little bit more and, and various things like that. So, um, yeah, uh, yeah, I guess that's kind of how everything is and, and where I kind of am with everything at the moment. As I said, I felt like it was something that I wanted to address with, um, with uh, those of you who watch this, um, I know there are, there's not a huge amount of you that do, but I do know that there are some people that I work with that occasionally dip in and watch some of my videos. Um, and as I said, I know there have been a few videos where I've been wearing binders and a few videos where I haven't been wearing binders. I just wanted to sort of clarify for anybody who, who was wondering. Um, certainly, because you know, I, and certainly for like future reference um, for you know when my writing career takes off and people start actually watching these videos at this point in time in my transition, um, I'm focusing much more on like the social transitioning side of things than I am on really thinking about the medical transition side of things, but as well as doing my social transition, I am also exploring um, various things that will help me decide long term what my transition goals are and what I need to do in order to feel happy that my um, that my gender is being correctly recognised and that I'm comfortable within myself and within my body and that I have done as much transitioning as I feel like I need to do in order to be happy with, with myself. Um, and that is a different amount for different people. Um, and, and it's the same whether you are trying feminine or trans masculine or trans non-binary if you consider yourself to be trans non-binary some people who are non-binary don't consider themselves to be trans non-binary and again that's perfectly fine if that's how you prefer to think of it i prefer to think of myself at this stage as being trans non-binary or trans by gender um, that is just how i'm choosing to look at it and how i'm choosing to feel about it because i am having to transition um away from uh, my, assigned, uh, my assigned gender into something that's more comfortable for me, something that's more true to who I am as an individual and as a person. Um, and, you know, I, I am making, in, in, 
it kind of, the more I kind of go through this process, the more I kind of realise I am definitely at least making a social transition, um, you know, with, like changing my pronouns um, and uh, using a different short for my name as well. Um, and yeah, it, it, it's one of those things where it's kind of like, you know, step by step, slowly, but slowly I am transitioning away from an identity that wasn't really comfortable for me into an identity that, you know, is much more me, it makes me feel much happier um, and stuff like that. But it's, it's an ongoing process and at this stage, I don't know what the end of that process is going to look like or how much more I'm going to have to go through in order to get to the end of that process. Um, all I know right now is that I'm still trying to figure things out and I'm still trying to work out what it is that I need in order to feel 100% comfortable and happy with myself and the, the self that I'm showing to the world. Um, and as I said, this is, you know, this will be for future reference for, you know, those of you who finally decided that I'm an awesome writer and need to be famous. <laughs> uh, you know, like the, the ground floor of this, this is where I was. Um, so however I am in the future, this is a good sort of record for where I am and where I'm at with it now. And hopefully you know what decisions future me made about things and I'm hoping that future me has enough money to be able to do what they want <laughs> and not have like huge concerns about oh god how am I going to pay for this um but yeah just sort of as I said because I have been very minded in these videos and because I know it's going to be much more obvious now that you guys can see all of me um just so that you are aware of what's going on Finding is one of the things that I'm currently doing to help me try and figure myself out. It's something that I feel happy and comfortable doing. Um, it's something that I definitely enjoy doing. Um, but at this stage, I don't know long term what that means in, in terms of my non binary transition. Um, okay. All right. This is a very long video. I apologize for that. I hope that you are at least sort of interested um if you can relate to anything that i said in this and that's if you can relate to it regardless of what your personal gender identity is um i'm sure there are a lot of cis women who can identify with my feelings of frustration towards the size of my breasts as well as there are you know um, trans masculine or uh, non-binary individuals who can also relate to some of my frustration, not necessarily in the same way. Um, some, of, some of it might be in the same way, but yeah, the, it's one of those things where I know body issues for everybody is a thing. Um, and I think it's something that needs to be talked about and discussed and understood a little bit more because everybody has their own individual issues, their own individual feelings. Nobody's going to completely get somebody else's point of view because you're not going to have their experiences, you're not going to have their feelings about their body because it is their body and not your body. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't relate to some of the things that they've said and to some of the things that they feel um, in your own way. Um, I do think it is something that is very important to talk about, even if it's not something that you 100% understand in and of yourself because you're still learning about yourself and learning about what it is you need um, and stuff like that. Uh, hope that makes sense. <laughs> um, anyway, I hope, again, I hope you found this one interesting. I hope you're looking forward to seeing whatever it is I'm talking about next time. I am try to promise to make sure the next one is not as going to be as long as this one and i will see you next time see ya <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video feel free to check out some of my others and if you like what you see please like and subscribe see ya